famous for its secret handshakes and undercover rituals, the Freemason's body is having a bit of a revamp. Having once had as many as half a million brothers, including Sir Winston Churchill, membership has fallen to around 190,000. Behind this huge front door lies the Freemasons London headquarters. And this summer, they're going to open up a new cafe and bar to the public for the first time. They say they want to be more transparent and they want to attract younger members. Dr. David Staples is the head of the organization. And since taking up the role of CEO in 2017, he's been tasked with dispelling what he calls the misrepresentation of Freemasonry, as well as modernising it for new generations. Well, we've been on a journey, really, for the last uh, couple of years or so to invite the public into the world of the Freemasons, um, who we are, what we do. And one of the key markers of that has been the launch of our annual report. And in it, it talks about the sorts of things that we've been perhaps not known for for three centuries, but we've been getting on and doing. And in particular, we've talked about our need and uh, desire to attract younger people to uh, become Freemasons. We've done some polling recently which actually shows that the under 35 year olds are actually very very keen on us. Um, you, they synergize with our um, things that we think are important, integrity, respect, charity and friendship and uh, these are universal values which uh, I think you work very very well. The Freemasons say men of any race, faith, age, class or political persuasion are welcome. Although there are two grand lodges or factions of the Society for Women, it is still predominantly a men's club and all prospective members must go through three symbolic initiation ceremonies. These younger members say they feel part of a global fraternity. It's about you know, personal development, uh, moral character is very important to us, giving back to the community is very important to us. Uh, you get to meet a, a wonderful and diverse cross-section of society. The places that I've been abroad um, to, to visit other Freemasons lodges, America specifically, just by sending an email uh, to the Provincial Grand Secretary and then one to another lodge elsewhere, it just opens up that broad um, spectrum of people that you can meet. Um, and I've made some great friendships over the years. And my uh, granduncle was a Freemason. Um, my father's cousins are Freemasons. So, um, it was certainly special to be initiated and have my uncle there. Um, it was certainly something I'll take for the rest of my life. life. Yeah. Um, I'm proud and grateful really to call uh, many men across the globe my brothers. Um, I think that you know, anyone's welcome to come and, and engage in what we do and, and see us at our best. Accounts show that it's a wealthy organisation with more than £75 million worth of assets. It also highlights the group's charitable donations. Last year, they raised more than £42 million for various causes. Being more open and casting off the shadowy image may be a way to recruit more members. But as journalist Dawn Foster argues, the anonymity of some Freemasons and their activities is also part of the attraction. That very secretive aspect um, and the fact that it is slightly closed off within what is essentially a very open, very networked, very online, very searchable society is for a lot of members what is so um, seductive and so enjoyable about Freemasonry. So I think that it helps for the heads of Freemasons to be more open, but I think for a lot of members, the fact that it is so secretive is what is so enticing and so enjoyable about Freemasonry. A lot of people who know know what the Freemasons have been historically and know that they are trying to do a lot more to kind of get rid of some of, of, some of that um, historical uh, association still worry a lot about the fact that they are very, very secretive about their membership. So there's still a lot of paranoia. There's still a lot of worry that, uh, there, that there isn't very much transparency. And I think knowing you know who in your community is a freemason and then being a lot more open about it would take a lot of the mystique away and it would you know help get rid of a lot of conspiracy theories and make it look a lot less dark and a lot more kind of open and less like a kind of secretive dark uh, you know, private members club the freemasons may have been set in their ways for 300 years but with a new ethos of transparency they're hoping their future will be secured for another 300